Welcome back to episode three of the big build off. This time I've got all my plans ready, which I'll have for sale when I'm all wrapped up with this. I've got all the base pieces that I laminated before, but as you see, need a bigger shop. Go over here. Rockler's new miter gauge here, which is really sweet. I don't have the fence for it. I'm just gonna add a fence and this is better anyways because I wouldn't wanna cut through that, but I want a zero clearance insert to minimize chip out. So I've just got a piece of maple that I made sure is good and square to keep on my joinery square. Screw that on, get to it. First up, I'm going to start cutting the half laps for the foot. This is zero clearance, so the handy thing is I can just line up my rule with the edge of the cut, slide it back, set my magnet to be a stop. Let's come back forward and check it. It's still good. All right. First thing I'm going to do is use my Rockler setup blocks to set the dado at an eighth of an inch. And instead of my finger, I like to use a, a pencil just so I don't scratch myself. It's a little safer too. I just realized I made a boo-boo and I modeled all my base material as being an inch and a half thick, but it's actually an inch and a quarter thick. Fortunately, because I built this in Fusion, all I have to do is go adjust this one thing and my whole model is gonna update. And now all the drawings that I did, I can relink them and they're all gonna update. Yep, one and a half, one and a quarter. I've struggled with Fusion for a long time, but my buddy Brandon from Make or Break Shot just released a course on Fusion that he let me be an affiliate for. And I went through that and for whatever reason, his approach just clicked with me. And I was able to knock out this model in just a couple hours and all these drawings and everything I need. It's awesome. And he gave me a 20% discount code that gives you $20 off YCMT2. So links in the description if you're interested in learning more about Fusion or just the modeling program. It's it's just saved my bacon since I made that mistake. Okay, my dado stack only goes up to seven eighths of an inch, so that's how wide this is, but I need to get it up to an inch and a quarter. So, time to come back over to my test piece, and I'm gonna use an off cut from trimming these earlier to mark the exact width I need because I'm not worried about the number, I'm worried about it matching. I'm just gonna line up this line with the tip of the tooth. I think that's right. Set my magnet and give it a test.
right. Now that was pretty tight, but the idea is I'm about to do a rough sand and after I sand these pieces down, that's going to make them smaller and everything should fit how I like it. And if it doesn't, I'll just use a shoulder plane or chisel and bring them home. I'm sure how this worked out was pretty intuitive. I just used an off cut because that was gonna be the same angle as a leg and this worked well to cut the these crazy, whatever you wanna call this joint on the legs. I did make a boo-boo though, I realized, and this is because I didn't check the plans again. I cut this in the same position as I did for the tall foot. So when these come together, it's a little forward. Um, not super happy about it, but this is under the table. It's not gonna be seen. You'll never notice that, so I'm just gonna rock with this, but if you uh, buy the plans and make this, make sure you pay attention to that and realize that when you cut the top, you're gonna have to adjust your stops. Anyway, um, now that all the dados are cut, I can start doing the um, you know stuff that makes it all look cool. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, before I do anything else, I'm gonna drill the holes for the feet to go into while this is all still square. So let's have a giant taper here. Taper here, it's gonna be a lot harder to drill. I've made tapering jigs several times before. You've seen my other modern table build. You've seen that, but this time I'm using this taper jig from Rockler. And the handy thing is since it's a zero clearance cut, it's gonna be a heck of a lot less finagling to get this thing lined up where I need it. Okay, the base is coming together. Of course, the top goes on top. One of the problems though is right now my base is what I call an open shape. As you see, it doesn't you know, have a continuous loop. So I need to close this shape because once the top goes on here, the force is gonna wanna push these legs out, especially because they're at an angle. So I need to connect the top. So I'm gonna do some stretchers here because the force they're primarily gonna be dealing with will be trying to push away. I'm gonna dovetail them in so that way I have a mechanical joint resisting that force as opposed if I didn't do that there'd be pressure going that way which probably would be okay since these aren't very steep but all that stress would be on the fastener and I don't want to put that much stress on the fastener that's connecting the top to the base.
So for most of my hand cut joinery, I just use my $20 Amazon saws and my $7 Aldi chisels. But <clears throat> if you don't have hand tools or that's out of your price range, there are alternatives. Alright, I think these are going to hold. Not the prettiest dovetails, but haven't done them in about seven years, and these won't be seen anyway, but they'll hold. I've got the arch on the top and bottom of the long piece. I also want to arch the feet so with it together I can mark the middle and then use that to make my arch. There we go. Next week, I'm going to be doing the finish prep and finishing on all these. And then the week after that, we'll be bringing it all together. So if you want to see this thing come together, make sure you stay tuned. So like, hit the button or subscribe, all that kind of stuff. If you want to make sure you see it when it comes out. And thanks to Rockler for sponsoring this episode of The Big Build Off. Make sure you're checking out the videos from the other people if you're not. I've got links in the description below. And anyway, I hope you learned something, were inspired or at least entertained. And until next time, make time to make something.